Hello, welcome to the first in a series of screencasts covering the basics of Rhino Grasshopper. So go ahead and open Rhino, start a new project, use inches. Go ahead and type Grasshopper in the command prompt. You don't have Grasshopper, if you or if you don't have the latest one, you'll need to go get it. To find out if you have the latest one, click on Help, About, and the latest one is 0 0.8.0066. And if you go for grasshopper3d.com, you'll see Download Latest Build, and actually don't download that one as you see it's not the latest one the latest one hides over in discussions general discussion and at the very top you'll see it there so just click on that and then you'll see one more link here click on that fill out this email and you'll be able to download it and get it installed so in grasshopper itself what we have is a series of um, tools that are organized by panel grouped into tabs and we have the parameters just like a general tab and then there's math sets vector curve surface mesh intersect and transform uh, there's other ones here these are plugins but for our concern we'll just focus on the, the default one so um, curve surface and mesh are actual objects and at parameters you'll notice this geometry these are references to geometry which is different than the actual geometric objects and I'll show a quick example like if you select surface you'll notice that it's orange and the reason this is if you mouse over right here you'll see floating parameter surface failed to collect data. That's because there is no surface. This is a reference to a surface. It can be a surface that was created in Grasshopper or one that exists in Rhino. But at any rate, um, it would have to be attached to a surface and then be referencing it. And then it would have an output, which is that referenced surface. Um, to show an example, if you go to the surface here and put a primitive cone, Sphere, and you'll notice in Rhino we have a cone in the sphere placed at zero zero zero. If you select them, they become green. If you select, they're just red, and uh, but you'll notice they're they're gray. And then if you mouse over them, they actually get a result um, of the object that they represent: an untrimmed surface and then trim surface, and again, we get an error. Now, if we were to go into Rhino and make a surface, then we can come back in Grasshopper, select it, right click, you see set one surface, you can also set multiple, manage surface collection. But for now we're going to just set one, go back into Rhino, click that surface, and you'll notice it turned green. And if the, the object is gray in here and we actually get a result, it is a reference surface. And so the geometries are in the parameters tab are references of all these different types, which can be useful as far as referencing objects that you've created in Rhino and in organizing groups of objects and individual objects within Grasshopper itself. So the primitive is this sort of the same as geometry, but in the form of uh, data and um, sort of information representation. And then lastly, we have the special and two 
really important, or three really important ones that you'll use regularly are um, number slider and panel. But uh, all of these become interfaces that are uh, largely the interactive tools for the grasshopper definitions you will create. So go ahead and grab number slider, panel, and uh, parameter viewer. And for the slider, you'll notice that the slider type, and you have floating point, integers, odd, and even numbers. We go ahead and set them to integers. And if you go down to values, you can see you have a min, max, and value. So if I want to say set a max of 100, make sure you click the green arrow, and now it's 100 commit change. Now I have a slider that goes 0 to 100. I take this and plug it into a panel. Now we have that feeding into build. You can copy and paste another one. that you can keep feeding these and the data just passes right through. Now if we send the same thing to the parameter viewer, we'll get the reference of its hierarchical value. And so it's at a root level and it's a single item. And just the rest of these objects would give the same result. This becomes really useful in uh, organization of um, objects, groups, and isolating individual objects and groups for any sorts of um, iso uh, tools for isolation and manipulation. Um, another thing you can do with the elements such as a slider and all of the elements really is right click and we go in the top, go ahead and give it a name such as height enter and now you've sort of customized your interface and as you build uh, out your uh, grasshopper definition you can further and further customize all of your components to where the individual components reflect their function uh, now again the, the panel can also be used not just as something that is fed data, but as something to feed data. So we go ahead and use two panels to show an example. We can write and click at any time and say disconnect all or disconnect and choose the specific one. And so if we double click in here, you'll see multi-line data. For this, we want to click that off. And I'm just going to type in a number. It's okay. And here we can right click that, give it a title. There we go. And so we could have a editable static value. Or a scrubbable static value. You could also create Boolean values, uh, give things color values, uh, work on it with scrollers. There's a lot of different ways you can order, organize, and reference data and uh, as a tool for editing these modules and controlling your definition. Uh, that's the end of the first screencast and uh, thanks for watching and I'll be back with more soon.